Hey, thank you very much for clicking on. Now, are you stuck in a nine to five job? Disappointed, unhappy, wanting to do something different? Maybe you got a hobby, uh, maybe you love arts and crafts, or maybe you got some other niche, um, and you're interested or thinking about becoming a reseller. Well, I've been working for the last few months on writing a book. And I'm pleased to say the book is finished. It's an extensive book, and I'm going to take a little brief look at it now in just a moment. So if anybody's interested, stick around, and we're going to take a little look at my book. It's finally finished, and I've uploaded it to Amazon, and it should be available now. Fingers crossed. Okay, so here is the cover of the book. So the front cover here. Everything I know, the ultimate reseller guide for antiques and collectibles. And there's my little ugly mug there with a nice little beautiful pocket watch. Turn your hobby into cash. Now the book is ISBN number 9781-068-7073-0-8. So let's have a look at what the book entails, shall we? So, I'm not going to go through the old book, but I'm going to do the table of contents for you. Everything I know, the ultimate reseller guide for antiques and collectibles. There's my copyright info, so we come down here. So we have an introduction, so getting started in the antiques business, and I talk a little bit about how I started, and how you can start, and things like that. Um, in this book, I share as many tips and strategies as I can to help you to make it a success. Uh, in chapter two, I start talking about business models and strategies. So basically, what type of business you're going to have, what turnover you need to cover, what your expense is going to be, how to set up the business, how to run the business, you name it. Absolutely everything is in that. There's 16 pages just on business models. Then creating business plans. I got that uh, in there, which is support in the business models. Chapter four is massive. Sourcing and identifying antiques, strategies for finding value, valuable items, and assessing their quality. Now, what does that mean? Let me break that down for you. That means I tell you all the secrets I know on how to find the pieces for, for next to nothing, for pennies. I talk to you about how to uh, you know buy some for 50p, sell it for 100 pound, and if you've never been to the car boot sale world, this probably sounds too good to be true, it's ridiculous. But why do you think we get up in three, four, five in the morning to go to car boot sales? It ain't for the benefit of our health. The stuff's out there and it does come in. I bought a solid silver vase from Iran um, about a month ago, 50 pence. It was almost half a kilo in weight. So anyway, there's tips on sourcing, there's tips on identifying, I teach you how to identify the stuff, how to value the stuff, everything in chapter four. Legal five, con legal considerations. Everything from, I cover everything from if you need um, documentation, if you need permits. In the UK, you don't need a license to be a UK uh, or an antique dealer and things like that, but other countries you do. But um, I also cover self-assessments and VAT and all the rest of it. That's all in chapter five. Chapter six, marketing and selling. So I talked to you all about the different ways you can market your items and sell your items. And I believe building a brand and everything else is all covered under marketing. Um, building a brand so that people know to trust you. And believe it or not, if you have two people selling the same item, it isn't necessarily going to be the cheapest item wins. If you got a buyer out there who has regularly purchased off you and they know your name and they trust you, they know you get good gear, they know you're going to deliver on their product, they know they're going to get the product in one piece, that to them is worth 10, 20, 30% more than buying off a new person. And the name then is called the brand. So that's all covered in chapter six marketing and selling chapter seven is sustainable and ethical sourcing and i cover everything in this from not buying stolen goods 
which is very relevant for Friday's podcast, um, to being fair when you're negotiating with people. Leave a profit in there and I explain to you how important it is not to take all the meat off the bone for people. Um, let me give you a little scenario. If you go to a car boot sale and there's a regular seller there who's always bringing stuff in and let's say he's paid a tenner for something and he's asking £20 and you say to him, no, I'll give you a tenner and he's had a really bad day and he tries to get 15 out of you and you go, no, I'll give you £10 and he's got to take that £10 to get to pay his bill. So he's made no money that day. You think, oh, he's made a tenner. You don't know what he paid for it, but then the following week, he's not going to show you the item. He's going to hold it back for someone else to buy it. There's little tips like that, all right? So sustainable and ethical sourcing, building up leads, building up uh, communications and things like that. Then I talked to you in Chapter 8 about running an antique booth or a stall. So I talked to you about having cabinets and antique centres and malls, how to do car boot sales and flea markets and antique fairs. That's everything you need to know on how to set your stall up, what to expect from a stall, um, how to display your items, you name it, everything is in that section. Then we talk about chapter nine, which is technology in the antique business. Now, what do I mean by that? Um, just as a quick example, um, utilizing, for example, Google search, reverse lens. That'd be a good example. That's one of the things in there. Or one of my friends has uh, designed and built an app called thrift map where you can actually type in the town you're at and it'll tell you where the car boot sales are or the charity shops are things like that utilizing technology to your advantage number 10 understanding antique appraisals so i go a lot more in depth into how to value antiques in this section uh, I tell, to show you all the ways of figuring out values yourself, even with limited knowledge. You don't need to be an expert. My book is for the beginner. So if you've never done this, well, it's not just for a beginner, but if you've never done this, I start at the very basics and work your way all the way up and cover to get into my level. So there's something in there for everybody. It's very easily and clearly laid out. And I would hope everybody will find something in there to help them. So. Trends and future outlook. We talk about how to identify things that are currently in trend, uh, things that may become in trend, how talk about when to buy, when to sell, things like that. For example, now, um, if you went back 10 years ago, 15 years ago, I could buy Whitefriars glass for a pound of ours. Some of them now are up a thousand pound of ours, but they peaked a few years ago. So if you'd sold them a few years ago, you'd have had more money. Gold and silver is now trending. Gold is the highest price it's been ever. Well, anyway, we talk about things like that and understanding trends and future outlooks of things um, in that section. Okay, so chapter 12 is overcoming challenges. And I literally mean everything. How to fight competition, how to deal with cash flow problems, how to manage your cash flow, um, how to stand out from the crowd, how to utilize your unique selling position, all different things like that. If there's a problem in this business, I talk to you on how to overcome it. Chapter 13, networking and building relationships. Well, that sort of briefly goes over what I mentioned earlier about, um, you know, building up a relationship with a trader at a car boot sale regularly. It's the same sort of thing as that, but I cover in a much, much greater detail how to build up uh, networks in shops and become a regular customer that they trust. You want to, you want a dealer to trust you that much that you can go, there's my jewelry cabinet, go and have a dig through it and know you're not going to steal it. Networking and building relationships. Networking is important. I talk about utilizing Facebook groups. I talk about using utilizing um, collectible clubs, collecting clubs that to your niche. So if you want to do toys, you want to do games, you name it, there's clubs and groups and things for it. That's all covered in networking and building. Restoring and preserving antiques. Now I talked to you a little bit about how to restore some things, how to clean things. I even tell you what not to clean. Um, I'll give you an example. A few weeks ago, I bought a massive Royal Albert uh, tea service. I only paid £20 for it and it was thick with nicotine. You only had to look at it. It was yellow, minging, sticky. I brought it home. I spent an hour washing it in soapy water. It's now up for £650. 
Sometimes a simple clean's enough, but I cover all that type of thing in the res restoring and preserving. Then we have a final checklist, and that covers in brief all the points I've covered throughout the book. Throughout the book, there are there's a section on how to build your own website, how I built my website. There's templates on um, in the business planning. There's like tools there for you to use to fill in on keeping and maintaining cash flow and keeping an eye on whether you're making a profit and how to change things if you're not on the in the worksheets and things like that. They're all in there. Then chapter 16 is useful websites and resources. Like I've already shared for you with you in my last video, I'd done the whole video, oldcopper.org, which is a website I use to find all my metalware marks. Well, I've put half a dozen really top end websites in there. And then 17 is my conclusion of the overall book. A little bit of motivational speak. I talk about um, the, well, everything. You name it, everything on how to start up in business, how to find the stock, how to sell the stock, how to advertise the stock, how to store the stock, how to ship the stock, how to pack the stock, you name it, it's all covered in this book. I've tried to make it as comprehensive as I can. I've put in it everything I could think of. And at the end, then you get all the sources. And what I have done, I've read multiple books and taken sections or inspiration of sections that I thought would improve my book. And then I've wrote sections out to improve my book to make sure it is as complete a guide as I could create. So here is the printed manuscript of my book. <laughs> 137 pages of A4 size. <laughs> it's a lot of information have gone in this book. So you're not talking a small book. Um, it's currently under review on Amazon, so hopefully by the time this video goes out, it will be public. The ISBN is in the film, and I will also put a link in the description providing. It's been approved by Amazon. I will put a link in the description um, so you can go straight to the book. I'm also going to put a permanent link in the homepage of my website, Antiques Arena, to anyone that comes to the website, they'll have the option of clicking and going through to buy the book. It is only on paperback and it is only uh, on Kindle. Now, the only reason I'm doing that, I'm not doing hardback, is the printing costs. I'm doing print on demand and the printing costs are absolutely astronomical for the book. They are sort of 60%, 70% of the cost of the book just for printing. Uh, <laughs> And in order to do print on demand for hardback, then you're talking, I would have had to sell the book for like 50 quid, 60 quid, and I don't want to be up that type of money. So you can buy the book on paperback, and it's a big book. I don't, I've looked, there are plenty of antique books on the market, there's how to do this, there's, how, there's a book on sourcing antiques, there's a book on this, but there's, this is the only one I think that is out there that is a complete guide on becoming a reseller and doing what I do. So I hope people support me and buy the book. And I hope uh, that it's as good as I hope it is. And I hope you really find some value in the book. That's my true hope. Time will tell. We'll see what the reviews are when I get them. So fingers crossed. If you do buy the book, leave a review um, or send me a message. I'd be very grateful. If you want to send a photograph of yourself with the book, then I would put that on my Facebook group or my Facebook page and if I get lots and lots of photos I'll choose one that I may put in the little advert on my homepage of my website where you get to be look there's the um, picture of so-and-so who purchased my book and this was the review this is what you could be buying so you'll also get a chance of becoming featured on my homepage in the advert for my book so hopefully you've enjoyed i'm a brief outline of my book if you're interested in becoming a reseller if you want to turn your hobby into cash you know a bit of a side hustle you don't want to give up your job if you want to keep working your job and just do this in the evenings and on weekends and make a few hundred pound a week extra it's all in the book to help you if you want to eventually give up your job and do this full time like me and i've got to be honest with you 
It's even a section in there why you do it. The lifestyle. When you work nine to five, you can't even go to the doctors without permission. Oh, can I take a day off to go to the doctors? No, you're working. Okay, I'll just suffer. When you work for yourself, you get to go to the doctors when you need to. You get to go to school plays when you need to. If you're sick, you get to take a day off without a problem and make it up another time. And the best part about it is when you're working yourself and your fingers to the bone, 50, 60, 70 hours a week, the profits are going in your pocket, not some corporation's pocket. That's the best part of this. The freedom it gives you. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully some of you will purchase the book and uh, show some support and leave some hopefully positive reviews. Now, I've laid it out as best I can to make it as simple as I can. You know, I, I'm dyslexic. Um, but I've really, I've had a lot of work gone into the book. I've had it proofread. So fingers crossed, everything is perfect. <laughs> it's my first book as well. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you soon.